All right. Well, thank you all for joining us here today. Uh, my name is Michael Zipperoli, and I lead our customer success here at DigitalOcean. And I'm very excited to be here uh, with Michael, Alex, and Orr, uh, some of our top customers, uh, to bring you their insights uh, from working with DigitalOcean. Uh, so thank you all for joining. Uh, would love it if I could just give you guys a moment to introduce yourselves, uh, a little bit about you and your organization, maybe the customers and the market that you serve, and then uh, I've got some questions for you uh, going from there. Uh, Michael, do you mind kicking us off? No problem. Hi, I'm Michael. I lead the engineering team at CodeSignal. Uh, CodeSignal is a skills platform that is trying to uh, discover and develop the skills that will shape the, the future. That's our, our mission. So there are two sides of our platform right now. One side that is focused on technical interviews uh, and assessments in a realistic uh, coding environment. Uh, and another side that's an AI-assisted learning platform, uh, again, in a realistic technical environment, trying to help uh, folks gain the technical skills that they need to be ready for the job or to upskill in their careers. Wow, it's awesome. Very much needed uh, platform in today's world. Um, Alex? Hey, uh, my name is Alexey Kolopayev. I am uh, one of the founders and the CTO of Eduki. Eduki is online marketplace for the teacher created materials. That's a place where teachers exchange their self-made materials, which are homeworks, lesson plans, tests, things like that. Uh, that is a digital assets marketplace. We sell PDFs and uh, that is uh, a popular thing. Apparently we are hitting the third million users soon. Wow. Congrats on that major milestone, Kevin. Uh, that's excellent. Um, and Or. Hi, yeah. Thanks for having me. My name is Or. I'm the CEO of Bright Data. We are the leading web data collection company in the world. I've uh, been doing that for around a decade. Um, we're serving today around 20,000 customers that are using Bright Data to collect public information from the web. The tools, the software, the products that we develop are responsible for the automation of that process. To add some uh, interesting numbers on top of that, um, <clears throat> just to get a, a hold of what we're talking about. So last year we processed, processed around 1.5 exabyte of data that our customers collected. That's if I remember correctly, 18 zeros after the number so huge you know mountains of, of data that is being collected eventually to train ai models LLMs, to ensure that companies are able to stay competitive when selling things online on e-commerce platforms to um, generate insights on uh, various uh, stocks and companies uh, that are listed on uh, public exchanges, whatever it is. So we're serving around 30 industries. Today, everyone needs data and the internet is the largest source of it. So we're helping them to collect it. Wow, excellent. Uh, well, again, very excited to have you all here uh, and you're all operating uh, at some really good scale. And so really excited uh, to get into our conversation with you here today. Um, maybe as a starting point, um, just given kind of your partnership uh, with DigitalOcean, um, curious, maybe what, what factors led you to choose DigitalOcean over other cloud providers? Um, and how has this decision impacted your business and your growth? Yeah, I, before this call, I actually went back to see, uh, when we started and that was a long time ago. That was like around 10 years ago. Um, but the reasons for doing it then and, and being a customer of DigitalOcean, a happy customer back then. And that's this, these are the same reasons for today, especially, I mean, specifically for us, a company that needs um, presence around the world to make sure that we can collect the data from the <clears throat> websites as fast as possible, with the, you know, as fast as possible, lowest latency. So for us, it started thanks to uh, DigitalOcean's VPSs around the world and in many locations within the US. And this is still one of the main reasons. Um, you're, you're one of the best in, in that. And this is what important for us the most. Excellent. That's awesome. Thank you, Or. 
Alex or, or Michael? Yeah. Yeah, for for us, you know, this decision predates me. It was one that the uh, that our founders uh, made at the very beginning. Also, you know, back in 2014, 2015. And uh, I think, you know, part of the reason might have been that they heard that Beyonce's website was running on DigitalOcean. And that was something that <laughs> they were very excited about. Uh, but, but in seriousness, I talked uh, to them about the decision and, hey, you know, why did we go with DigitalOcean at the beginning? And the reason was the simplicity. Uh, compared to other options, especially at the time, you know, without naming any names, uh, there's some very dense user interfaces, some very complex uh, things, but DigitalOcean had a great design, very simple, good documentation, very easy to get started, even if not only do you not have a DevOps team, but your whole team is two or three people and you're just trying to get something off the ground, uh, it's very easy for them to, to just figure it out and get started without having to worry about all these things. Uh, they just didn't have the space to worry about at the time. But we absolutely love hearing that. Uh, yeah, and, and Alex, from your perspective? Yeah, our decision-making story goes back <clears throat> eight years ago. And back in time, we loved DigitalOcean for three big reasons. For the cheap droplets with hidden zero hidden costs. For the network traffic, which was free, it's a big thing and very good disk and network performance on droplets far better than competitors can offer even for higher price those were the three liners for us we're happy overall the only issue is maybe we're lacking some features like avs regions or s3 glacier for example that could benefit us otherwise it's good we would spend double or triple if we were to use other cloud provider so we won't be able to hire developers and grow at the same pace all of those reasons, they stay with us till today. I don't think that changed. That's really great to hear. It's great to hear some of our, our core values being reflected back from you all. Um, you know, also thinking a little bit about community. Um, you know, community and support, I think, play a significant role in the success of any cloud platform. Um, how has your organizations leveraged our community in the resources and our customer support channels to overcome uh, the challenges in your business, and also just to optimize the use of the DO platform. I can start with that one because it's it's related to what I was what I was just saying, which is that it's very simple. The, one of the nice things about DigitalOcean is that we haven't had a lot of things that we had to figure out that were weird or complex or difficult, and so in a lot of ways, you know, I think the very straightforward use cases and documentation has made it. Uh, nice to use without having to go really deep hunting for the answers. But when we have wanted to, to do something interesting or context support, the support team has always been really great in making sure we have the resources we needed to, hey, this is the answer to your question. Yes, we can raise the droplet limit on your account or help you figure out why you're seeing these things. And so that's been really fantastic. One of the things that we use that um, is also helpful is the, the API for uh, managing droplets. Uh, it's great to have that programmatic access. There are also open source uh, wrappers and, and SDKs for that, some of which we use for different things. And that's been helpful uh, as well. That's great to hear. That's really great to hear. I'll, I'll answer that from a slightly different perspective, I think. So I kind of got far away from the product and technology in recent years, just because we We've grown as a company, and I, and I have my other day job as a CEO. So, um, to me, this community is more about the relationship. The digital ocean are seems to be working really hard to maintain. Um, so, I know everything is going on with our relationship between Bright Data and Digital Ocean, mostly because Digital Ocean are making sure to update me. Even though I'm, I'm, I have stopped being the focal point in the company like for, for many years now. But I, I, I know by name who's handling us. Sometimes they come to say hi in conferences uh, that they somehow know I'm there just to say hi and to talk to me. And that gives me a lot of uh, confidence that um, what has been will still be in the future as DigitalOcean are also growing, which is this personal touch and not, not, not as an act, but really knowing what's going on with Bright Data and really caring. We don't see that with 
many vendors. And that's actually something that we're trying also to reflect to our customers. So we have a good reference point to always uh, look at. So kudos for that also, by the way. That's really, I, I personally, I love hearing that just working with the success team. The success team is always talking about how they love our customers. So to hear that from you are uh, reflected back is, is actually really amazing. Um, yeah, Al Alex, anything from your perspective on community? Well, we haven't really used any of the community resources aside from a couple of the setup guides. And we have contacted support several times for mainly two reasons. Yeah, first, reporting issues with digital ocean services, mainly Discord network issues, solved. And to request resource limit increase, number of droplets and volumes, which was annoying, but I'll admit that we should have foreseen the need and request them beforehand instead of contacting support at the very last moment. Yeah, definitely appreciate that. Uh, well, well, all of you uh, are off, are operating at a, at a fairly decent scale. Um, and so curious just to ask you a little bit about scalability. Um, you know, scalability, I think, is often a critical factor in uh, sustainable growth. Um, when you think about DigitalOcean's platform, uh, how, how have we enabled you to effectively scale your business while maintaining performance and also helping you manage cost? So we, we've we grown a lot as a company, not just pretty much in every parameter, but the, the most interesting one, at least for me, is not the number of employees or, uh, or not even revenues. It's the number of so it's, it's the sheer size of data we are collecting or helping our customers to collect. And that's, that's all deep tech that needs to be developed. We're in critical infrastructure for our customers. If we, if we have an outage, which is, you know, hardly ever happens, we have you know, thousands of companies or teams within companies just sitting and waiting, which is the, the, it's good and bad. It's good because you understand you're actually a critical infrastructure and it's bad because it's just bad. Um, we, so, so the scale is just going up and we reach new peaks every, every quarter. And last year we released one of our newest and most advanced products, uh, something we call the Scraping Browser, which is our fastest ever growing product. And it runs on, on DigitalOcean and we thought we knew scale, but we didn't know anything about scale until we launched this product. And using DigitalOcean's uh, Kubernetes allowed us to do it smoothly. And every time that, that we need help, we get help. And sometimes, I mean, it's okay that sometimes things are failing because it's also, I mean, I got some reactions for DO as well from DigitalOcean that this is a huge scale. I mean, not just in my view, but also in your view. So it, it's okay to, to need to tweak things in order to make it smooth, but we, it, it always happens. So, um, I said initially that locations of the VPS is something that's very important for us. Maybe the only thing that is more important is supporting huge, massive scale that is growing in an exponential uh, growth rate. So um, yeah, definitely happy happy about that also with the option. Awesome. For, for us, uh, you know, again, one of the things I love about DigitalOcean is that I don't have to think about it very much in, in a good way. It, it's simple. It works. It, it, you know, it's not something where I'm always worrying, is DigitalOcean the thing that I need to worry about? Generally, no. Uh, and so from scaling t uh, to, you know, zero assessments when we launched our hiring platform uh, back in 2017-ish, uh, to now having millions of assessments completed, the configuration, the setup, it looks very similar for a much larger scale to what it did a long time ago. And we have had to make changes to the scaling and to how we handle, you know, sudden increases in load and things like that. Uh, but the actual setup that we, you know, use DigitalOcean for has remained remarkably similar despite, just despite a very large growth in platform usage, which has been really fantastic. Uh, you know, being able to create more droplets, uh, use uh, snapshots, uh, scale them very broadly. Uh, that kind of horizontal scaling has been really great for us. Very nice. 
in year <clears throat> in eight years of living with digital ocean we went from uh, being a local german player to now being international player in 27 languages uh, that is that 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 required a lot of changes along the way and i cannot say the same <laughs> we we did we did we did change a lot but uh, what's remarkable is we did achieve that with a, a, a hand power of one person at the beginning and now with two persons and that 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 is something i've never seen before in my life we use though digital ocean at a bare minimum we use droplets and network balancers so we handle scaling on our own we're happy that digital ocean allows us to spin new droplets very fast and we usually don't have to run tests on them to verify their performance before adding them to our infrastructure Although we had issues with new droplets being not functional several times and had to recreate them. DigitalOcean is a good fit for vertical scaling as well. Scaling droplets is lightning fast. And if you don't have to resize the disk, and since we try to keep all the data on separate volumes, we are able to resize and return to operational state even large droplets with the minimum time, which saves us lots of headache. Not once we had an issue with the droplet after resizing, which sometimes is very critical for us. That, that's excellent. So it, it sounds like, if I'm understanding correctly, from each of you that uh, kind of a combination of the, the simplicity of DO and the way that we've kind of organized the platform has allowed you you all to kind of scale with, uh, with less people required on your site. That's really great to hear. We love hearing that. Uh, simplicity and ease of use, again, uh, one of the things that we get most excited about. Um, you, you know, when you think back on, on your journey, uh, I think all of you have been in business, uh, for, for a good amount of time now. Um, and you, and you go back to maybe, um, you know, the beginning, if you will, uh, and you think about maybe the different startups that are watching us, uh, for different startups that are considering their initial, uh, cloud infrastructure provider, w what advice would you give them? Uh, what advice when you think back on your experience, um, you know, in your experience here at DigitalOcean, would you put in their mind to be uh, thinking about and considering? Start fast and cheap, because most likely what you're doing in the first days is wrong. So at least cut the, cut the costs fast, but that's actually, it's a good practice even when you scale up. So to translate it into like actual features, I would say compute time and network traffic costs. Uh, for us was the uh, number one factor when considering a cloud infrastructure provider. And, and DigitalOcean managed to, to remain ahead of all others, allowing us to, to grow and develop our business on these parameters. And um, yeah, sometimes we, we need to talk about the prices. Uh, that's fine because we're also growing. So I guess it's a win-win. Um, yeah, but these two factors, especially when just starting, even when we're starting a new product within Bright Data, you know, that, that's the number one thing to consider because maybe also that's like not the greatest idea. So at least run fast, run cheap. And if it succeed, great. If it failed, also great because it's fast and cheap. Love that advice. Yeah, especially that notion of what you might be doing in the beginning might not be the, the right answer, but it's important to do anyway. Uh, love that. Yeah, I, I, I really like Or's perspective there. Uh, whatever you start with is probably wrong. That's definitely true. Uh, it doesn't make sense to spend a lot of time doing really complex cloud configuration for an app that may not ever work uh, or that may have way different needs uh, in the future that, than you anticipate at the very beginning. I think the main thing is just don't overthink it. Get started with something and something that will let you move really quickly. If somebody has experience with one cloud provider, great, maybe use that. Uh, if you don't have somebody who's a very experienced uh, person working with a, a given cloud provider, start with something that will let you ramp up really quickly. And I think DigitalOcean is, is again, really great for that because of the focus on simplicity and just being able to get started very, very quickly. I would say for most of the startups where the free network traffic, very cheap plans and good SLA is everything you need, you all provides all three. I'll advise though hiring a person that knows how to work with cloud infrastructure, somebody like a DevOps or maybe a savvy developer from early on 
rather than relying on some UI based infrastructure configuration, you know, that pays back quickly. Excellent advice. Excellent advice for, for new entrepreneurs and, uh, and I think startups all over, um, maybe, maybe looking forward, um, you know, when you think about the trends that are emerging in this space, uh, what, what do you see shaping the future of cloud? And, and how do you think about adapting your work and your strategy to stay ahead of, of those trends? Is this the part where we all say AI? Yeah, um, I think. <laughs> it, it might be the part where you all say AI. Um, Alex said earlier that there, you know, that your usage of um, DigitalOcean has been very, like you use droplets, but a lot of the rest you manage yourself. We have a lot of the same, we use a lot of droplets. Um, and I think, you know, the shift has been from using cloud providers in that way towards using Kubernetes more, toward using uh, serverless uh, architectures to edge computing. Um, and so I think definitely being on top of those trends and making sure that you are set up in a way where you have the current best practices for scaling is really important. Um, and then, yes, of course, AI. AI is something that is really important to all of us. And so uh, depending on how you use AI or whether you're running your own AI, uh, that may affect your answer, but certainly a part of the story. Absolutely. I agree with Michael that everything is going to be Kubernetes one way or another, and the droplets or machines will stop being a thing and everyone will deploy containers instead of creating servers. Hopefully integration between platforms and solutions would become much more seamless and scaling cloud infrastructure will be fully automatic. I'm more pessimistic about AI. I don't see AI making a difference on cloud infrastructure management anytime soon, aside from analyzing logs, building reports and alerting maybe. But I won't, I won't trust my servers to AI for some time more. And that's, that, that's an issue. Uh, we're not, we're, we don't try stay ahead of the curve. We're not, we're not really a tech startup where we're at the, at the, at the cutting edge of the bleeding edge of the technologies. We're happy just to stay more or less on top of the things and adapt accordingly. Our main goal the last few years was to fully automate our day to day tasks related to the cloud. And we're finally there. Next stop is to move to another regions because actually available worldwide is a, is a, is a problem for us. Fully automate infrastructure scaling and that going to keep our hands busy for quite some time. Hmm. Interesting. I'll say uh, I, I agree with my with my friends here, um, at least with Michael on the AI, I'll get to it. But on the rest, I agree with both. Um, but I think that generally speaking, uh, the, the, the foundations of how to work with vendors will kind of remain the same. It's all about performance, cost, speed. No matter what new technology or new methods to use the technology will, will arise, it's always to optimize these three things. As for AI, um, just from, from, from the point of view of someone who's uh, seeing the demand for data for AI, it's a different story, but it's so big that cannot be ignored. As for um, DigitalOcean or general cloud providers, I think that we'll see a lot of it, but specifically in the areas of observability, monitoring, log analysis, and things like that, that the, 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 the human eye will never be as fast and sophisticated as a machine that was fed with an enormous amounts of history to know what's, what's, what happens in the presence. So I do think that we'll see a lot of that. We're kind of starting to see already. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. On the observability front as well. Definitely agree with you there. Um, one of the things that I think both Michael and Alex, you touched on uh, were Kubernetes. And I think this idea that everything's going to be, um, you know, in containers. Do, do you mind just saying a little bit more about that, especially for maybe some of our newer developers, uh, maybe not thinking that far quite yet, but uh, any advice that you would give as you think about, um, you know, when to move to Kubernetes or uh, should you start with Kubernetes versus droplets? Just why, and, and maybe a little bit more on like, why do you say the future is all going to be containers? 
It's just better. Uh, definitely, you know, containerize <laughs> all of your stuff if you can. I think as to whether you should start with Kubernetes, this is back to, you know, what Or was saying about, uh, like, just move quickly. I, I wouldn't spend a lot of time on Kubernetes configuration if you're a two-person startup and you're just trying to get your app running. It's not worth the time. Uh, but, you know, Alex mentioned hiring a DevOps expert. When you're a 10-person company, you know, maybe you have some traction, then start thinking about it, right? At a certain point, you want to um, make sure that you're setting yourself up to scale and succeed and not reinventing the wheel. In the past, we found ourselves creating logic for scaling droplets that is essentially recreating things that Kubernetes already does better. And you don't want to find yourself doing that when you could just be using it right out of the box and, and uh, setting yourself up to scale really uh, powerfully and, and easily in the future. I agree. That is I think we, we, we all had that phase. No, sorry, I just wanted to say that we, I think we all had the, that phase in our company life. <laughs> it was painful. It is painful, I agree. It is just a very convenient level of abstraction and uh, it is developer friendly. Uh, it is uh, testable friendly. You know, it is uh, just better. I agree with Michael. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, uh, really appreciate um, all of you for joining today. I uh, want to thank you guys again, uh, I think both for, for the time today and also just for the continued partnership uh, with here uh, with us at DigitalOcean. Hopefully all of you tuning in uh, enjoyed the conversation and uh, we will look forward to uh, hosting you again next time. Thanks so much. Keep, keep rocking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.